that desert region area claim to be descendants of Uqba ibn Nafia and Sahaba. There are also graves of the Sahaba in Libya and other desert regions showing that within that first generation, Muslims had actually penetrated the Sahara Desert and had gone down further near Lake Chad. We also recognize the fact that Islam came into North Africa as a reaction to the Byzantine Roman Empire who had attacked the Muslims. And so the Muslims responded and took their holdings in Palestine and then in Egypt and went right across North Africa. And so Islam was spread as um, a sort of, you know, similarly to, to passing a baton. It was spread between, from group to group in a natural way by merchants and also by intellectual people or by scholarly clans. And so in Andalusia, uh, at the golden age of Islam, there was a famous group of Muslims called Al-Murabitun or Al-Muravids. And they, this was a resurgence of Islam which came up uh, in North Africa and which spread into Andalusia and then down into West Africa. Abdullah ibn Yasin, Rahimahullah, was sent by the Murabitun into West Africa and he developed uh, bases or ribats um, where students would be studying and they would also call to the good and forbid the evil. He established ribats in the first half of the 11th century. We also recognize the fact that in the early West African history, trade routes were set. Trade routes going from the Sudan right across the Chad into Nigeria and right across the Savannah. Trade routes going from Libya and down across the Sahara. Trade routes from Morocco. Trade routes coming along Morocco to the Mauritania and then down Senegal. And so there were a series of natural connections between the people in North Africa and the people over by the Red Sea and West Africa. So it is along those trade routes that you find the spread of Islam. By the 9th and 10th century of the Christian era, there was a strong presence in West Africa. Takoa is the earliest state of all Islamic formation in West Africa and also we hear the names of Gao and Ghana. One of the misunderstandings um, propagated by many historians is the fact that al murabitun the Al-Murabids, sacked the kingdom of Ghana in the 11th century and it is propagated that these light-skinned Berbers attacked the black Africans. This is a mistake because when we go into the earlier writings like Az-Zuhri's work we find that the kingdom of Ghana was not sacked but in 1076, the, the opposition to the, to the king of Ghana was toppled. As Zuhri writes, the people of the town of Ghana were hardened unbelievers until 4, 469 uh, after the Hijrah or 1076, when Yahya ibn Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr, the Amir of Masufa, came forth. They were converted to Islam during the time of the Murabitun. And so what he writes, he said, they came haraja ilayh. He came forth to them. It did not say he conquered them. All of the writings are, are given this concept of Murabitun coming in. And after they entered the kingdom of Ghana, the king stayed in power. So how could it be a conquest if the king remained in power? And David Con Conrad uh, and Fisher did uh, a work called The Conquest That Never Was. And these are European historians who have recognized that actually Islam was, was spread naturally from North Africa into the desert and then into West Africa.